Okay, so we'll start with the, with the first question. What do parents like best about your school? Okay, great. Um, well, so we are a very small school, um, which I think is appreciated by everyone. Uh, we're a very nurturing environment. Um, there's not a person in the building from a teacher to an accountant that doesn't love children in our building. Um, we come at a great price point. Um, and for most of our, 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 also our, our parents, our families, we're a very good location, convenient location in East Cantonment. I think what parents like about us is the fact that we are a Christian school, unapologetically Christian. It does not mean that we take only Christian students. What it means is that we are intentional about teaching Christian values of respect, of, of love, of um, you know, kindness to the young people. And the fact that our school has almost become a family school for that fourth generation. And so parents tend to feel a lot more comfortable with us. Wonderful. I'm going to stay with you. Yes, ma'am. How do you gather that information? Is it analytical? Is it anecdotal? How do you know that that's what they love best about you? Yes. So um, I think one of the things we do quite well is our parent engagement. We tend to carry out a lot of surveys. Um, particularly when the board needs information on specific things. And so we, we carry out surveys. We tend to have you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations with parents. We sample sometimes just to get their opinion on things, and then we can put these information together. And we tend to understand what they don't appreciate, things they feel we can do better with, and what they are quite pleased with that we have to, as a school, firm up and do more of. And so you know, a lot of surveys help us. Yeah, I agree. So um, I think in running any great school and being a school leader at any great school, you have to love feedback from families. Um, it has to drive what you do. Um, technically, yes, we do use Google Forms. We use a platform called Hi Mama, which um, allows us to sort of give out information and then receive information. And I always encourage families in almost every email I send to let me know if you have any questions or comments, but also I encourage my, my teachers to do the same. We want feedback from everything we give out, even on homework. If you get a homework assignment um, that you're helping your child with, write a note on there, let us know what went well, what didn't. It drives everything we do. What do you do with that feedback once you've got it? Oh, this is a great question for me. I love professional development. Um, that is, I think, probably everything I do. <laughs> Um, as a school leader, um, we do a, everything in-house um, for the most part every now and then. We'll go out to conferences and things like that. But we take feedback not only from student assessments, but that feedback that comes in from families. Um, we use that to uh, create our professional learning community a calendar, our agenda. What are we covering? What are our priorities? And that information comes from parents. At, at Vine, we, my, my um, bosses have this mantra that we never arrogate ourselves in thinking that we care more for the wealth of a child than a parent. Because whether we like it or not, schools tend to like to do that. You know, we tell, tell parents to do this, but they care more of the child. And so when they give us feedback, we're quick to let that interpret and reflect within our CPD, so teachers like she, she's saying. So it reflects in our training, behavior management, how we interact with the children, our classroom output. Because then their feedback tells us that they are plugged in they, they know what is going on, they're asking the questions, and we prioritize parents' um, feedback so that we can put things on hold to make sure that a parent's concern is addressed in real time. Because of that, and maybe I'll, I may have to jump ship with this, we do not wait for PTA meeting to address some issues, so we nip them in the bad early before PTA. Absolutely. I think what we're picking up there is a certain level of transparency wherever there are any issues that it's dealt with quickly, efficiently, effectively, and in a very transparent and uniform way. We'll go on to our third question. I'll come to you first. Um, how do you manage to carry parents along with you, especially when it comes to changes in the dreaded school fees? Ooh, that, um, <laughs> challenging. I have to say that you're always going to get complaints when there's going to be adjustments in fees. However, 
I think what we have learned to do early, and I've been with my school probably a little over four years, um, I've seen the practice and it seems to work. The communication goes early. Yeah. But sometimes we test the waters at PTA. And so we're going to send subtle hint during the meetings that, oh, we're going to run this and that program. We're modifying this. And so it's likely to reflect in the school fees and say in the next two or three months or in the next four months. That way you tend to get the reactions either from that meeting or others are coming you know, behind the doors to tell you why you're adjusting fees was just six months ago or nine months ago you adjusted. So the early communication helps. Um, and so we tend to understand what the temperature is like in that regard. And sometimes we might even stay the decision um, of, of you know, making fees adjustments when we, te we tend to see what the reactions are like. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, but I, the journey, I think, starts early, like he said. Um, the, of course, that requires good planning, right? Knowing in advance that you're going to have to make these adjustments. But, but taking families along the way, it, it means for us communicating, I'll say early, but consistently about what you're doing, about your goals, your next steps for the children. And so by the time you get to a point where you need to make an adjustment, families understand the vision, right? They understand what they're building towards. Yeah. And so that helps to put meaning to that extra payment. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So again, communication is key. Very. Uh, transparency is key. Yeah. And bringing them along the journey with you, sharing the vision and helping them understand. Yeah. Okay. So the age old conundrum. What advice do you give to parents and guardians to help them best support their wards at home with their learning? I, I think I love anything that talks about supporting families and parents because I, I'm a parent and I'm one of those parents. I think most of us know what I mean. I'm one of those parents. I want to know everything about what's going on. With my staff, everything is about educating. So when we are, you know, differentiating homework assignments, I will, you know, t teachers come in to, to, you know, partner with me and get advice on, how do we prepare families to support a particular child with a certain type of homework? And we write messages, you know, on that work. Um, again, because I explained to them, we have to educate parents, too, on how to support the goals we have for their children. We are educators. We are professionals. We're working with accountants, lawyers, you know, people who have not gone into this field. Um, and so your role in bringing them along is, is knowing that you are their educate, educational partner and um, targeting, directing everything you do from that perspective. Lovely, thank you. Um, I, I, th I think I would like to say that the biggest influence on a child, contrary to popular opinion teachers, is not us, mm. it's the parent. And I think if parents can assume this position of knowledge in knowing that they have the biggest influence on the child, they can help the child learn and be better. So be plugged in, be interested in the most mundane of things they get to do, particularly when it has to do with school. And that way, they see that you're interested. They come to you, you can encourage them. And with what I said earlier, the fact that you're plugged in and you get to know what is happening at school with them, you know how to guide them along. One of the things we do at our PTA meetings, our PTAs are not question and answer sessions where we allow parents to come in to complain. They're more like mini conferences. So at every PTA, we have a topical issue a guest speaker comes to speak on. So um, the last time, for example, this uh, topic was on how to manage um, children to learn, how to help them learn at home, you know. And so there is a, a guest, an expert in the area who comes to speak to them because constantly we want them to help because whatever happens in the home affects it at school and the reverse is true. I think that in the earlier um, plenary session, someone said that about 60% of, you know, a child's learning is from home. And so we, it's intentional for us that the parents are plugged in what they're doing at home, you know, so it affects us also in the school. Um, Can I add yes, one more thing? I'm sorry. You, you've got my mind turning too. <laughs> um, so I, I'm going to get a little bit into the details here about another way we try to bring parents along. Um, you know, so when we have big breaks, so let's say we just came back from midterm break. Yeah. Um, I like to do general... I will say like a newsletter, yeah. but it's really just a very long email mm -hmm. um, <laughs> to families. Pictures. Yeah, with a few pictures, pictures and then goals for this next half, right? Next half of the term. 
And um, I'd like to get into the details. After I've talked about specific goals that we've set for each class, then I like to get into the details near the end of those to explain to families how to support those goals at home. And so we're at early learners school. Uh, we have preschoolers up to kindergarten. And so even in working on things like the pincer grasp, right, could be a term that you, maybe you're not familiar with as a mom or a dad, but take time to explain what that means, include photos of it, what that grasp looks like. And then things that you might be doing as mom or dad on an everyday basis at home, like maybe cooking in the kitchen, breaking carrot sticks, those little moments at home that you just see as a moment. For me as an educator, I see it as, wow, there's a lot of learning going on there. Yeah. But um, breaking that down in those emails, explaining to families, you know, when you're cooking in the kitchen, this is the, 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 um, the sensory feedback, the vocabulary about texture, you know, trying to open their minds that these are learning opportunities that you have every opportunity to just dig in on and that are supporting these goals that I've mentioned sort of in the first half of those very long emails. And then we have a couple of that. Um, one of the things we tend to also talk to our parents about is to be sure that we're careful what we say about school to the children at home. Because sometimes we tend to pick up on the fact that children hear things about the school at home yeah. and it affects their behavior at school. So maybe something happens and mommy says something about this teacher and so the child comes and says, even mommy said you were like that. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> I'm sure you know what we're talking about. And so that tends to affect even how they relate with their teachers, how they respond to them during lesson times, between the teaching and learning. And so there should be some synergy and consistency between what is done at school and what is done at home. So that even if you have a challenge with a school or parent, um, teacher, it should not be expressed in the presence of the child. So that at adult levels, we can deal with that and let the child be a child to learn. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I think what you're describing there is what I tend to refer to as the triangle of trust between the school, the child, and the parent. And if everyone plays their part effectively, and if everyone understands their role as well, that we come from a place of trust with each other, then it works very well. So I think you'd like to join me in thanking both our panelists for some incredible help and information. Thank you so much. For more information, just call 026-271-4106, the Global Super Teachers Conference. Get informed, go perform. This conference is brought to you by Africa Education Gateway, Pearson Edexcel, Glossnet, School World Events, NAPS, Access Bank Ghana, and Ghana Olympiad Academy. It's the Global Super Teachers Conference. Get informed, go perform.